Hi everyone, welcome to today's tutorial. Today I will be showing you how to create a form that automatically sends information either through email or to PDF or to even a Google Doc. Now what I have used these for uh, specifically for my school and for myself is as follows. I created an automatic detention form. I was getting tired of filling out detention forms after school, handing them to kids, kids lose them, um, they never came back, they never made it to the parent. I just figured let me cut out the middleman and send it directly to the parent's emails. So I created this detention form. The other thing I also created was, uh, this was a simple form um, that I just created for this tutorial, is a missing homework form. Basically what this would do is I would say my name, the student, the subject that they missed the homework and the reason why they missed it and this would automatically send an email to the parent letting them know that they had missed homework. One other thing that I use this for at my school we are one to one uh, and what I did is I created another one of these forms where students take notes in my class uh, kind of like in Cornell notes form they input all the information in here and then when they are done um, they press submit okay so they press submit on this button and when they are done they will receive an email with something that looks like this so as you can see I created this today so they would input the whatever title might have been and all of this gets pre uh, printed for them I actually have one of my students uh, type this up during my class and then they just email it uh, to everybody so not everybody has to do it but it does get them you know working on perfecting their note styles but a lot of you had uh, questions about the detention form so let me show you how I did it uh, just a little quick note this is from last year as you can see we had uh, almost 294 detentions and uh, it was a pretty rough year but let me show you guys how I did this so let's get started all right to get started on this automatic sending form or automatic Google form sending uh, first thing you need to do is go to your Google Drive. I would suggest you create a special folder. Uh, I created a folder here that says how to create an uh, automatic uh, detention form. So first thing we want to do is we want to create a new form. So let's do that right now. Uh, if you do not know how to create some of these forms, uh, please check back to some of my tutorials and I'll show you how to do that. So let's create a Google form. Now in this Google form, what we want to do is first we want to title it so we know what we are talking about. Also, let me also like the color blue, just makes me feel a little bit better. Um, first thing we want to do, we want to call this automatic detention form. All right. Now here are the things that I like to input in my detention form. First thing I like to input is the teacher name. Uh, I usually make this a drop down so that you can just choose a name and I will put my name this in the group. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to input the date that you want to input this um, this form. So let's choose uh, where is it? date okay. and we'll label it as today's date. Okay. Next we want to input is the student name. The student names. I usually list this also as a drop down. I will input, you can input any amount of names. I will just input my name. A little list, a few more. You guys get the picture. All right. After that, we want to input the date of the infraction. And we'll create this uh, date. And last but not least, we want to give a reason. Okay. So once you have a reason, I usually make these uh, mandatory so that you don't send these by accident if you did not click one of these buttons. So once you've done that, it looks like most of our form is done. What we want to do now is submit our first response. So let's do that. So how about we choose my name? We'll say today's date, which is the 1st of May. We'll choose, how about student number two? We'll do the date of, how about to make things easier, we'll just choose my name. We'll do the date of the infraction, which was today. Sorry, the date that they will serve the infraction, which will be tomorrow. And then the reason. This 
Insightful. There we go. All right. So it looks like our entire form is filled out. Let's submit our first response. There we go. So if we just go back to our original form, let's check out our responses. So it looks like we have a response in here. What we want to do though, is we want to create this Google spreadsheet. So once you get to this little section to responses, get right here and we want to create a spreadsheet. Create a new spreadsheet. Yes, we want to create a new spreadsheet. So once that spreadsheet is created, what we can do is we can move on to our next step. And our next step is to tell this spreadsheet what to do when it receives a response okay all right so once we have created our form and we submitted our response uh, go back to your google drive and notice that you'll have your form that you created and you'll have those responses let's open up uh, those responses from that google form and you'll have something like this all right so it looks like we put my name in we put the date of the infraction the student that received the infraction uh, the date the infraction will be served and the reason that that student got that infraction okay well what we want to do is we want to tell this form to send this uh, to the parent so one of the things that we do need is the parent emails so what we're going to do is we're going to create a whole new sheet so go right here in the bottom left hand corner we're going to create a new sheet let's rename this uh, right, there it goes we're going to rename this parent emails okay so in here, all we need to do is we'll put in the student name and then we will put in parent emails, okay? Doesn't really matter how you label them just so that you remember uh, what they are. One thing that does matter is the student name. All right, so we're gonna input one of the student names, which was my name right here, and we'll put an email for this parent. All right, now let's say there was another name and we'll call it Andy Smith okay. and we'll just say the brothers all right so now that we have that what we want to do is we want to uh, connect these two together so what that means is every time the form inputs a new uh, submission we'll get a whole new uh, line here and what we want to do is we want to tell whenever this name pops up to email this name when this name pops up that this email or they will receive an email okay so let me show you guys how we do that right now to do that what we want to do is we want to create one more sheet and we're going to call this new sheet let's rename this we'll call this array formulas okay because we're gonna have to type in some formulas in here all right let's do that right now so right now you should have three things you should have the original form with the responses we should have created uh, a parent email section where you have a student name and then you have the parent emails that correspond with each other if um, there are multiple emails for parents what you need to do is uh, place a comma and then you can type in another email and it will send it to both emails okay so now that you have this last but not least you have to create this last page which is called array formulas and I will tell you what we need to do next okay once we have created these three sheets what we want to do now is pull some information from this uh, form responses into our array formulas uh, don't stress about these formulas I will have them uh, down below so you can just copy and paste them but you can also follow along what we want to do is in right here in a1 we want to create an array formula just start typing in the array array and uh, it will populate for you so once you have that in there, notice it's got a little uh, parentheses. We want to go back to this page right here where it says form responses and we are just going to drag from F all the way to A. All right, so you see how it's got that right there. Let's go back to our array formulas. Now let's close this off with a parentheses. And once you press enter, notice that it pulled in all of the information that was uh, in the other page. So if we go back to our form responses and let's say we just type something in right here, type something it should automatically populate over here see so once we have that let's just delete this what we want to do next is we want to uh, tell the form to send the information so what we're going to do next is we're going to create uh, a new formula sweet once we have created our array formulas and the information has populated here what we want to do is go right here 
and create a section for parent emails. Uh, the reason why we are doing this is that whenever a new uh, row gets filled in, we want this email to correspond with a parent email from here. Okay. So how are we going to do that? I'm not going to bore you with the details on how I'm going to do this, but I will have the formula down below and I'll explain a little bit of what is going on. Okay. So let's see what's going on if we look up right here. What this is telling me is we're going to start right here, this VLOOKUP. So this VLOOKUP, uh, what this is looking up is right here. So whenever a name populates right here in D2, what I wanted to do is I wanted to get emails, the parent emails, from the sections over here. Okay, so it's going to pull out the parent emails. Alright, now because they are not sorted, uh, this is the reason why I have false. Okay. Now the next problem that we are going to run into is what happens if it is blank. We don't want the random emails to be getting sent out. Okay. So I did uh, if this is blank here, do nothing. If there is a name in the field, then it's going to follow this formula. All right. So just uh, try your best to copy this formula, plug it in, and it should do all the magic for you. Notice that the moment I plugged in this formula, that the emails, the parent emails that we have set up right here get populated in here. Okay. So once you have all of this set up, every time a new section will appear here, the parent email will get uh, populated in here. All right, let's move on to the next step. So once you have successfully been able to create the array formula and input all of the information here and I was able to populate and you're also able to um, do the VLOOKUP formula and have the parent emails populate here, your next step is to create a template. Uh, and the reason why is that when we send an email, the emails will get sent uh, as a PDF document. So let me show you what that looks like. So this is a template, uh, just a basic template that we created. I labeled it as template, do not touch because we don't want to edit this. And everything you need to know is you need to have these tags here. Uh, basically, the way they are spelled, if it has an apostrophe, then it's got to have an apostrophe. If it doesn't have an apostrophe, make sure it doesn't have an apostrophe. Uh, but today's date, um, the student, the reason, uh, anything else that you would want or have in your form that needs to get sent out. So this is what our template is going to look like. Okay. Once you have this set up, go back to your form and what you want to do is you want to go to this section right here where it says add-ons. All right. Um, go to get add-ons and we're going to look for an add-on called AutoCrack. All right. Once you look it up, I already have it installed, but I'm going to go right here and I'm going to go open. Okay. Once it opens for you, uh, mine's already going to be populated, but you're going to have a little section right here where it says new job. Okay. All right. And we're going to create a new job. Uh, I'm not going to create it on here. I'm just going to show you guys our actual uh, form. So I'm going to show you the live version of ours okay so once you have it all created this is what it's going to look like but i'm going to edit it for you and i'm going to take you step by step okay so uh what do we want to uh, call this just this form itself we're going to call this automatic detention and basically when you get here you would like to select the template that you created okay so we're going to go we're going to call this automatic detention and we're going to select that form that we created where I said uh, template do not touch. It should populate for you. There it is. We'll select that and then we will click next. Okay, so we have that. We'll click next. Once you click next, you'll notice that these tags will be here. And basically it, everything needs to get mapped. If it looks something like this, that means something's not popping up. That means it's, it's not connecting to something. All right. So you want to make sure that when you do this, everything here is populated. Okay. All right, let's click next. Now, this is what we want to know. What are we going to label these files? Because if you have a lot of detentions like we do, uh, you want to make sure that the files are labeled. So we labeled it as the student name and just as has received the detention. And anytime the form is submitted, it creates a new PDF document. Okay, 
So we're going to click next on that. Where do we want these uh, files to go? I just created another folder that said uh, detention 2018 and all of those detentions will populate in there. Okay. Uh, this has nothing to do with us so don't worry about that. Again, this also doesn't uh, have anything to do with us. So just. So once you guys get to this page, it might pop up like this where it says share doc and it might be click no. You want to make sure that it is click yes. Uh, so once you click yes, all of this information here will pop up. What kind of document would you like to share with the parents? Well, you're going to share with them a PDF, okay? Uh, you do want to allow collaborators because that's how it allows this entire process to work. Uh, send from a generic no reply email address. Well, you do not want to do that because most of the time it might go to spam and or trash right away. Um, basically whenever this entire system works it will look like you sent the email so your name at gmail.com whatever it might be okay now who do we want to send this uh, email to well you want to send it to that parent tag so make sure you put your dollar sign put parent emails and it should shoot out that email to parent emails uh, I normally included my principal myself and a few other teachers that are responsible for discipline uh, as a blind copy I took the emails off so you guys can't see them Okay. Next step is you want to give yourself an email title. What will this look like? Well, put dollar sign in student. So this is what it look like every time that person receives an email. So it'll say Andrew Negru has received a detention. Okay. You can also put today's date or whatever uh, tag you also want to include in here as well. Last but not least, what I decided to do was include in the body of the email the entire template. So this is exactly what the Google document looks like or the Google template looks like. I included in the email. And then uh, parents will basically receive this and the PDF. So once you have all that, click next. Uh, and this is the last step, run on a trigger. So I didn't want it to run on a time trigger because sometimes teachers will input this form at different times. Uh, so I wanted whenever somebody submitted it, um, it will run it automatically. And I'd say within less than 45 seconds to a minute, the PDF was already sent and the email was sent. So click save. And all you got to do after that is just uh, try it out. If you guys have any questions, please uh, email me and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions. All right. Thank you.